Hello everyone and welcome to our very first video tutorial on how to write your first Salesforce trigger from start to finish. Um, and we're going to assume you know absolutely nothing about code. My name is David Liu. I'm a Salesforce developer at Google. Um, SFTC99 is my site. And um, a few years ago, I actually didn't know how to write a single line of code. If you had told me that you know one day I'd be an engineer at Google, I would have told you you're crazy. But I promise you it's possible. It's especially possible in Salesforce, and anyone can do it. The hardest part is getting started, but I am here to help you get started. So first things first, what's a Salesforce trigger? It's, it's basically automation in Salesforce. You say, if this happens, do that. Uh, much like a workflow, but, but except you have unlimited capabilities. You know, workflows have a lot of limits, but when it comes to triggers, you can do anything you can dream of. So first thing you need is an instance of Salesforce. If you don't have one, you can go to Developer Force and get your very own instance. I've done that here. I have a brand new fresh instance of Salesforce. And what we're going to do today is create a trigger on the user object that says every time a new user is created, this field here, allow forecasting, will be checked. So when a new user is created, whether or not this is checked off, our trigger will check it off for them. Now, so how do we create a trigger? First, we'll go to Setup. Then we'll go to Customize. We're going to create it on the user object, so we'll go to Users and Triggers. We'll hit New here. And what will come up is a template for creating a trigger. What we'll do here is we'll put our trigger name. I'll call it force forecasting on user. And the event is before insert. So it'll say before a user is inserted, run everything in between these two brackets. Now what we're gonna say is for user you in trigger.new you dot force actually I don't know the name of the field so if you need to know the name of the field here what we're looking for is the developer name or the API name of the field um, anytime you create a field you create two things you create the label which is what you know people normally see and you create the developer name and so here I'm gonna find the developer name what I did was I went to Google, I searched for Salesforce user object, and this is it, forecast enabled. I'll copy this, go back to our trigger, we'll say u.forecast enabled equals true. Oops, true. Semicolon, we'll save. And it saved. If any errors came up, it would have showed up here. Um, I'm going to go through exactly what the code did in a second, but first let's just see if it worked. So we'll go to our new user, see the allow forecasting, it's definitely not checked here. We're going to save it, we're going to insert this user by saving it, and we'll see what happens. Okay, save successfully, scrolling down, and boom, the field was checked, so our trigger definitely works. Now let's see why it works. Going back to our trigger. Okay, so let's do a line-by-line -line analysis. Um, this first line here is on every trigger. You basically define the name of the trigger and the event. You can do before insert, you can do before update, you can do before delete, but really we just wanted to run this trigger before a user was created, so before user was inserted. Here we have a loop. It says, for every user in trigger new, um, and every trigger you ever see, will always have these lines of code in it because um, it loops through every single record in your trigger. Now, there can be multiple records in your trigger if someone does, say, a mass update using a tool like Data Loader. Right? Maybe we use Data Loader to create 10 users. Um, if that were true, there would be 10 users in this trigger, and this loop would say for each user in this trigger, and we give the name you, um, we could have called it anything we wanted. 
we could have called it, you know, my user. For each of these users, we run the code inside the brackets, which is basically enable their forecast enabled field. And we'll hit save. And you know, that's all there is to it. Our trigger is good. Um, if we wanted to deploy this trigger in an org, we'd have to write a test class and we'd have to deploy it using change sets, which I'll show you in my next video. Um, but essentially that's it. You know, it's that easy to write your very first trigger. Um, hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. I will be making more videos. I think, I think users have told me that it's helpful for them. Um, you know, follow me on Twitter at DVDKLU. Um, add me on LinkedIn. And if you have any questions, you know, I'm always happy to answer. Just put comments on the site. Um, I'm really here for you to help you guys learn because it was really hard for me to learn without a resource like this. And, you know, I don't, I don't think anyone should have to go through that um, because getting started is the hardest part. And I promise you, you can do it. All right. Thanks, guys.